Okay, hi. Uh, we're going to begin our discussion today on electricity. As usual, we want to talk about, we want to begin at the source, and the source of electricity comes from forces inside the atom. In fact, all forces in nature come from the forces inside the atom. This is where we get the strong nuclear force, which binds protons and neutrons together, weak nuclear force, the electromagnetic force, and gravity. All these forces come from within, inside the atom. So today we're going to concentrate on the electromagnetic force. This is the force generated by the proton and the electron. There's one type of force field coming from the proton, which we call positive, and we have a negative force coming from the electron. We call both of these forces charge. And we know, for, if you remember from your uh, old, high, you know, middle school or stuff like that, middle school classes, like charges repel, unlike charges attract. So two protons will be repelled by each other, but a proton and electron will be attracted to each other. The proton resides inside the nucleus, and the electron orbits the nucleus. Because the proton and the electron are attracted to each other, the electron stays in orbit around the nucleus unless it's given enough force to push it out. Okay. So, also, even though the proton is over 1,800 times more massive than the electron, both the proton and the electron have the same amount of charge. The electromagnetic force is very important. It's what gives structure to the atom and to every other material object. The atomic shell provides the structure for your, the molecules in your body. And this is also why your hand doesn't go through another object. Um, the electron shell of my hand, of our hand, whatever, is repelled by the electron shell of this table. And so even though the atoms are mainly empty space, still the electron shells of one object material are repelled by the other, and that's why I can't go through this table. Nonetheless, as engineers, we can use this attractive or repulsive force to do work. Since electrons want to move towards protons and away from other electrons, we can harness that energy and make it work for us. In 1909, Robert Millikan and Harvey Fletcher were able to measure the charge of a single electron. So we're going to take the inverse of that number to give us our first basic unit of electricity, called the Coulomb. The Coulomb is 6.24 times 10 to the 18th electrons or protons. Okay, Coulomb is just a way to package how much charge I have because that number of electrons or protons will always give us the same, same amount of charge. So just think of it as an egg carton. If I have 12 eggs, I have a dozen eggs. If I have 6.24 times 10 to the 18th electrons or protons, I have a Coulomb. Okay? Now, we're going to use the Coulomb, though, to help us define the other basic units, such as the volt, the amp, and the watt. If I were to put this egg carton on the table, does it have any potential energy? Well, the right answer would be compared to what? What is my reference? Okay, so in order, for, uh, in order for an object to have potential energy, you need three things. You need mass, atoms, you need a force field, gravity, and you need some distance between the object and the reference. So if I were to call the table my reference, then the egg carton has no, more, has no potential energy because it has no potential to move. But as I raise the egg carton above the table, you'll agree that it starts to acquire potential energy, right? Because it acquires the potential to move. So as I raise this against the gravitational force, it acquires the potential to move. The gravitational force wants to move it back. So now if you remember also, the units for energy are the joules. So 
as I begin to raise this, it starts to acquire more potential energy. You'll agree, right, that as a, at some point this will acquire one joule of potential energy. Okay? All right, now let's use that same analogy. Now let's call this a Coulomb. Coulomb of electrons. The table is a table of protons. There is an attractive force, but there is no potential energy because this has no ability to move. However, if I start raising this Coulomb over the t proton field, then you'll agree it starts to acquire potential energy because the attractive force between them wants to pull it back. And as I raise this, you know, keep raising it, at some point you'll agree, right, that it will acquire at least one joule of potential energy. Okay, so now we're going to use that to define the volt. The volt is one coulomb with one joule of potential energy. Okay, so a volt is just a bunch of electrons with now with the potential to move. So if I raise this coulomb even higher, so it acquires two, three, four, five joules, then five joules divided by one coulomb, five volts. If I have six joules with two coulombs, I would have three volts. You get the idea. It's simply the number of joules number the amount of energy divided by the number of coulombs that I have so you can think of voltage as the potential to move or even the pressure to move okay voltage many times can be thought of as a pressure to move okay so let's take a look now at our second definition the amp here if I take this coulomb now and I let it move Okay, so now we go from potential energy to kinetic energy. If I have one coulomb and it moves past a certain point in one second, we say we have one amp of current. So an amp of current is simply one coulomb going by a point per second. So if it takes two seconds, for a coulomb's worth of electrons to go by, I would only have half an amp. If I could get two coulombs to go by in one second, I would have two amps. If I can get ten coulombs to go by in one second, I got ten amps. Okay, so that, again, there, that's how we come up with the amp. Not too hard. Now let's take a look at the last one, the watt. Okay, um, the watt is is. Well, let's take a look at this. If we look at the definition of the volt, it was one joule per coulomb. Definition of the amp, one coulomb per second. Let's put those two units together, and what do we get? Joules per second. Does that remind you of any unit we've talked about before? Hopefully that reminds you of the watt. Okay, So the watt is the basic unit of power. Power means how much work can we do per second. Okay, so in order to measure electrical power, we take the voltage, the pressure, the desire to move, times the amount of electrons we're moving. And that combination tells us how much electrical work we can do. So uh, again, think of it like I have um, two hoses. One's a straw, one's a fire hose. And I give them both the same amount of pressure, water pressure to move. Which one's going to be able to do more work? Right, the big water, the fire hose is going to do more work because it has more electrons going down it. That's, that's the best way to think about electrical power. It is the combination of the voltage, the pressure to move, times the current times the amount of electrons that we're moving. That is the watt. Okay, so now to review, okay, Coulomb, 6.24 times 10 to the 18th gives me my basic unit of charge. The volt is simply a Coulomb with the potential to move. Okay, one joule per Coulomb is one volt. An amp is simply one Coulomb going by a point per second.
okay? And the watt is the combination of the voltage times the current, and that tells, much, tells us how much electrical work we can do per second. Okay, so next time around we're going to talk about how to measure voltage, and it can, we, it, uh, measuring voltage can be very dangerous. We'll go from there. All right, see you next time. Bye.